Stampers, Kelly Atchison at estampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Today I have a super cute card to share with you. I am going to show you how I watercolored this little pig. I used the chalk pen on my clouds and I made this cute little fence and you're going to want to know how to do this. Isn't it just adorable? Got a little stamping on the inside there too. I am using this little piggy. It's a brand new stamp set coming out in our catalog that goes live June 1st. So if you don't have a Stamping Up demonstrator, um, I'd love to earn your business. I can send you a catalog. You can just pop me an email at kelly at estampabove.com. So let's get started and I'll show you how I made this. Here are the pieces of cardstock that we're going to need. I've got a eight and a half by five and a half inch piece of crumb cake cardstock that I just folded in half from my base. This is a brand new color. It's one of our new in colors called powder pink. This is going to be the layer that goes on top. I've got a layer for the inside of Whisper White that is four by five and a quarter and then just a scrap of white to stamp and die cut my pig on. So the first thing I'm going to do here we're going to come in with the Memento black ink pad and I am going to see which layer I've got here. I'm going to stamp my little pig that I'm going to die cut. I want to give that just a little bit of drying time. And it says this little piggy. I'm going to stamp that right over close to the right side. And that's a little crooked, so I'm going to try that again. You know, we all have to make little mistakes before we get things perfect, right? And that looks much better. Okay, there's my little piggy. Then I'm using the stitched shape framelits. These all have those little stitches on there. I don't know if you could see that, if I can get this close enough. I don't know if this is if the camera is going to actually focus on that. But it puts this little stitched edge all around your... Um, shapes that it cuts out. If you don't have the stitch shapes framelits, I highly recommend them. I use them all the time. I actually prefer them because they're so neat. You get four different circles and four different size squares and four different size ovals. So it's a really good value. They're $30 and I will put the item code up on the screen for you so that you We'll be able to get these if you would like them. I really do love them. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place my framelit right over my little pig like that, and I'm going to go die cut this in the big shot. I'll be right back. And here we go. Easy peasy so far, right? Okay, now that I've got that stamped, I'm going to stamp my clouds on my pink layer. You can put as many clouds on as you would like. I thought three was a good number and I just kind of put them randomly so they don't look all even because, well, you know, clouds are pretty random. Then I'm using our chalk marker and that's just going to add some interest to my clouds and color them white. If you're using a Memento ink or a non um, permanent ink, you might want to give this a little bit of drying time, your black ink that you stamped. There we go. Then we're going to come in and we're going to do some water coloring. And I've got ink pads here that I'm going to use. And remember, when you want to use ink pads for water coloring, you don't want to take the ink right off the pad. You want to open it up just a little bit and squeeze it, and that's going to put that ink right inside the lid there. Taking a um, blender pen or an aqua painter to your ink pad, it doesn't really work well. I'm not really sure why. It's a little strange, but it just it doesn't work good. It doesn't work that way. I'm going to clean this aqua painter off because I was using it a little earlier with some green. And again, this is the powder pink color that I'm using here. And when I use an aqua painter, I always like to kind of do a little bit on my scrap paper first before I start on my image. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want my color to be too concentrated. I want it to be a little bit more mellow. 
So it's just a habit that I've gotten into. And of course, we're not using watercolor paper. I'm just using Whisper White. So when that's the case, you don't want to do a bunch of brush strokes, I guess is a good way to put it, because it'll make your paper start to pill. So it's kind of like I hit it quick and get it over with. And I'm just going to do some shading here on my little pig. And... It might look kind of crummy. I always think it looks a little crummy when I'm doing it. But then once you stand back and look at your card, it's like, oh, look, it's kind of artisty. You're kind of like an artist. And I love that feeling. <laughs> okay, to clean your aqua painter off, you just brush it back and forth until there's no color coming out of it. And then I'm going to come in with some early espresso. And again, I just brush it off here a little bit. And I'm going to put that down here in the dirt. Our little pig needs to be sitting in a little dirt pile, right? I think these pigs are so cute. And now I'm going to come in with a little smoky slate. And this I'm going to use just for the shading. So I want to make sure that it's pretty mellow. I'm going to just put that shading around my pig. And again, you just look like an artist. I mean, it really does make things look nicer when you add a little shading. Okay, and as long as we're stamping here, I'm going to bring my inside layer and my Memento ink again, and I'm just gonna stamp part of this little pig on the inside. And I just wanna, I don't wanna catch the words here, you make me happy, I just wanna catch the pig with the flower, and I did a pretty good job there, Woohoo! Yay, Kelly! Okay, and then, the front of my card says this little piggy and the inside says says thanks. So this will be a thank you card that I can use. Here we go. I am going to adhere. I have to tell you, my daughter made this amazing project. If you're friends with me on Facebook, you would have seen it. She made 30-some <clears throat> little um, chipboard scrapbooking pages she does before and after school care at a local elementary school during the college school year and she was having her last day there she made 30 some little um, um, like a scrapbook page only they were on chipboard so she covered them with paper and then she put the kids group picture on it and their name with the first letter and then like um, for s it would say um, silly and for a, it would say amazing. So she did all these little things. I'll see if I can find a picture of that. I'll steal a picture and put it on my blog so you know what I'm talking about. And the reason why I got off on this little tangent is because she must have used like eight bottles of my glue for these 33 projects. So I'm really empty right now until my order comes in, which is kind of funny. But my daughter, I can't wait for her to be done with college. She is going to be an amazing elementary school teacher. She is so excited and she can't hardly wait. And yesterday she sent me her um, a picture of the screen that had her grades on it for the semester. And she is getting all straight A's. I couldn't be more proud of her. She has worked so hard. And like I said, whoever gets her to be their um, teacher going to be some very very lucky kids because she is just she's going to be a great teacher and anyways I got off on that tangent I can't wait for her to be done and become a teacher because then she's going to be um, signing up as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator because that child let me tell you she has more talent in her little finger than I have in my whole body her creativity is amazing and I can't hardly wait to share that with you Make sure you stop over to my blog, astampabove.com, and that will be posted on the 19th of May, 2017, and I will have a picture of the projects that she made for her little kiddos. They're just, oh, incredible. I can't even tell you how awesome they are. Okay, <laughs> back to the project. I got off on a tangent there. For those of you wondering how my husband is doing, he is doing very good. I just cut his hair. I know I have many talents, right? <laughs> Doesn't take much with a shaver. I just gave him a haircut and he is headed out for a walk. That's one of the very few things that he can do as he's recovering. 
is um, a lot of walking to build up his strength. And he's walking like five miles a day, which I'm just like, holy cow, that's amazing. So he's headed out for a walk right now, and I told him, be quiet, I'm going to be doing a video. He's really good about that, too. Thank you, you know, for your continued thoughts and prayers. You guys have been amazing. I feel like I'm just like part of this great big huge family. And I guess I am, right? Okay, here's our cute little pig card. Now for the really fun part, the fence. This is our classic label punch. And I need six of these. Oh, let me show you this too. Brand new product, I can't remember what it's called. Hang tight, I'm gonna look it up in the catalog. Catalogs, like I said, are going to be um, going live. On June 1st, this is called Wood Textures Designer Series Paper Stack. You get 48 sheets, four of four each of 12 double-sided designs, and they're six by six. So look at this. Not only is this going to be great for man cards, but it has been fabulous for my little piggy card, too. I have another, I have two more pig cards I'm going to share with you. On my blog, on May 19th, um, you'll want to check those out. They kind of, I kind of made a whole series of these little cards, but one of the cards uses another, well, it's going to use this paper, which is kind of whitewashed. Really cool. Okay, back to my fence. Oh, squirrel. I get off on this tangent, right? So we need six of these. Let's see. Yep, this is, this side is a little darker than this side, so I'm going to use this side, and I'm going to try to punch them really close together to make the most out of my paper, right? We do that as stampers, we try to conserve. So now we've got four, five, six. Okay. Now what I did to make my fence is I kind of did a dry fit here. And I'm just going to put my little fence right here. And I'm gonna put it right on my card and put it together so I know exactly how wide it's going to be and I'll have it all lined up just right. And sometimes this can be a little frustrating, so have patience. Remember, this is the second time I'm doing this. The first time's always the hardest. And now I'm going to try to like hold this in place and put some little glue dots on here, if I can find any glue in here. There we go. Oops, see, that's why it's a little frustrating. It's like, dang it. Okay, so let's get these straightened out again. Yep, <laughs> yep, okay, it's gonna give me a hard time, I knew it. If I wasn't on camera right now, this would all work out perfect, right? Isn't that Murphy's Law? Just have patience, like I said. I don't know, there's some little quote that's running through my head, but I can't think of the right way to say it, so I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut <laughs> before I embarrass myself. And here comes and you can move these around a little bit after you have them done. Like that one's a little crooked, so I'll straighten that out a little bit. <gasps> and I, I need to move it in a little bit. There we go. <laughs> okay, well, maybe this wasn't, no, it's really quite easy. Okay, there's our first little panel. And now I'm going to put a dot of glue, maybe. Come on, glue. There we go. Dot of glue for the top rail of my little fence. Oops, there's my glue sticking out. I hate that when that happens. Don't you hate that when that happens? I'm gonna just wipe a little bit of it off. And grab a tissue before I get it all over the place, right? Nothing like sticky fingers when you're trying to stamp. Okay, so here's our cute little fence. And I'm going to grab some dimensionals. I have some little pieces here that are left over from classes. And I'm gonna raise my fence up on dimensionals because that just makes it have that much more interest and be super duper cute. Everything's better with dimensionals, isn't it? I think out of all the products that I have, if I had to live without some of them, this would not be on my list of products that I could live without because I love dimensionals. Oops, that one's not gonna work. 
Oh, and really exciting news, Stampin' Up's new catalog, we have these dimensionals and we have some mini dimensionals coming out. So those are coming to you June 1st too. I can't hardly wait to get my hands on those. I haven't been able to, um, we couldn't get those in a pre-order. Don't forget about my little tip, stick your finger in the middle of the dimensional, it'll kind of raise the edges up so you can get that darn backing off that sometimes can be a little bugger. Okay, I think we're ready. <laughs> Super cute! Oh my gosh, is that not just the cutest little thing? And if there's a way to make it cuter, that would be by adding a little bow with our linen thread that, you know, it's kind of burlappy and it goes along with the little farm theme here. So I am going to use my bow jig and I'm going to wrap this around three times, cross it over, oops, let me see if I can hang on to it, go up and over and back under and tie it in a single knot. And if you've never seen one of these before, I'll see if I can find the link that I can put on this video showing you one of my tip videos on how to use this, how to make great bows actually. All right. Isn't that just cute? I love bows. And they're easy to make with that little jig too. A mini glue dot and I'm going to roll this up a little bit so it's not sticking out there because the linen thread is so very small when you put that on here. And here comes my little bow on my fence. Don't forget, last but not least, we need to stamp the envelope. So how about I bring this black ink back in here and I think again I'm going to use my little flowery pig and try to just catch the edge of her. I'm saying it's a her but it could be a him I guess. All right and hang tight while I color this a little bit. I'll be right back. There we go. Stinking adorable, right? Again, this is the This Little Piggy stamp set and the beautiful Designer Series paper stack. I can't wait for you to get your hands on this. It is just fabulous. So there we go, another cute project. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, again, um, I would love to earn your business. Please pop me an email at kelly at a stamp above .com. Make sure you click down here in the corner. You can click on my subscribe button. That will subscribe you to my YouTube channel. And also in the comment section on YouTube under this video, I'll have a link to my blog where this post is. So I'll have all the ingredients and dimensions listed there for you with some more photos. Don't forget to check back on my blog on Friday, May 19th. I will have two more cards using this little piggy stamp set. And I'm part of the Control Freaks blog hop, which is always fun. Our theme for the month of May is sneak peeks. So we're going to be using all kinds of new products from the new catalog. Make sure you check that out. Add a little sparkle to someone's day and send them a card.